take time to be holy. Speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitted for service aboard. Jesus' name. We pray. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life. I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have seen the Lord's goodness. His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord, you have been so good. In my life every day, oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life. The Lord says I should not fear. He says I should not worry. He says I should trust him. Jesus says all shall be well. Says I should not fear. He says I should not worry. He says I should trust him. Jesus says 
all shall be. I say the Lord say, not fear, not worry. He says you should trust him. Jesus says all shall be well. The Lord says, He says, no worry. Trust him. Jesus says, all shall be well. Oh yes, thank you, Father. Oh yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh yes, thank you, Holy Ghost. I believe all shall be well. Amen. Oh yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh yes, thank you. Believe all shall be well. Believe. Oh yes, thank you, Father. Oh yes, thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh yes, thank you, Holy Ghost. I believe all oh, shall. I say, oh yes, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh yes, Amen. Almighty Father, we are grateful. You have said we should not fear. The hair of our head shall not fall to the ground without your knowing it. Despite the persecution, the noise of the devil, you said we should not fear. Because in this end time, there are so many souls you want to convert. And that you will be with us. Nothing shall by any means hurt us. And therefore we yield ourselves unto you. We commit ourselves unto your word. Do unto us according to your word. May we qualify, O oh Lord, by this word. To escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before you holy and acceptable by you. In Jesus mighty name. O oh Lord divine. As we go through your word and pray. The Holy Spirit will minister the word of life to your people. The word of courage to your people. The word of victory to your people. The word of boldness to your people. The word of oh God that will make them never fear, never discour be discouraged in their lives. Thank you for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We can be seated. Handling persecution in your new life in Christ. That's the message we're considering. Handling persecution in your new life in Christ. Persecution and a new thing go together. When something is new, some people rejoice for the blessing of the new thing. Others criticize, condemn it, and desire to make it to cease. It's always like that. New thing in the society. New thing in your life. Not even to talk about the, way, the word of God. Fellow human beings will want to challenge it. While others rejoice. When Jesus came into the world with the message of the gospel, many rejoiced and praised God for the salvation and righteousness he brought to the world. While Many criticized and condemned him and fought sought to kill him. That's the whole thing. This child is raised for the rise for those who will rejoice and the fall for those who will condemn him. He is raised for the rise and the fall of many. In the book of Matthew, 
chapter 16 verse 15 to 21 Matthew chapter 15 chapter 16 verse 18 to 21 the bible tells us here saying now Matthew chapter 16 verse let's start from verse <coughs> verse 15 he said unto them but whom say ye that i am and simon peter answered and said thou art the christ the son of the living god and jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou simon by jonah for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven and i say also unto thee that thou art peter and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Here a set of people shall rise up, that shall rejoice because of Jesus. Being the son of God. They shall rejoice for their faith in Christ. The salvation he has brought. The deliverance he has brought. The eternal life that he has brought. Many will be rejoicing to have discovered him. They will be rejoicing for associating with him. They will be rejoicing for mansions in heaven. My father's house, there are mansions for you. They will be rejoicing that they have escaped hell. He, they will be rejoicing they have found him. But look at it, the other side. From verse 21. From that time forth, began Jesus to show unto his disciples. How that he must go up unto Jerusalem. And suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes. And, he, and be killed and be raised again the third day. Can you see the opposition party? To Jesus Christ himself. Elders, scribes, Pharisees, the Jews. They shall reject him. They will, want to, they will kill him. They will attack him. They will deny him. They will not accept his message. They will seek to cause him to perish. Cause his voice to cease. That is always what happens with the new thing. That's always what happens. So, now again, the disciples of Jesus, who were righteous and holy, there was no sin in them. They were loving people. They were immoral people before, but they stopped immorality. They were troublemakers in the society. They were thieves and robbers. They were troublemakers. But they repented of these things and put on a new life. If any man is in Christ, tell me what happens to him. It's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. See, they were, they were the ones causing trouble in the society. See, they were not helping people. They were not doing good to people. There was no good works. They were not helping their fathers. They were cursing fathers and mothers. They were doing many evil things in the society. They were witches and wizards. Killing their children. Killing other, other people. And people feared them. Who they were. They turned to Christ. Believed on the Lord Jesus. Their lives changed. They became gentle. See Paul now. They say, ah, is he not the man that was persecuting these people? Now he has become one of them. So gentle now. So nice. What has happened to him? In a man being Christ, it's a new creature. Yet, these people went to spread, spread these good tidings. This gospel message. The people received them. Look at it in Acts of Apostles. Chapter 8, chapter eight rather, verse 1 to verse 3. Acts chapter 8 verse 1 to verse 3 and Saul was consented unto his death and at that time there was a great persecution 
against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hurling men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered verse 4, abroad went everywhere preaching the, God, preaching the word. The question is, what was the evil of these people? What evil have they done? Did they were they committing immorality? What evil did these people do? Even to the synagogues. They were righteous. They were righteous and holy. They, if there was anything they sought to avoid, it was sin. But see the havoc against righteous people. I'm saying this because you may be offended saying, what have I done? You don't need to do anything. Your righteous that your righteousness is a problem. That your righteousness, that you have come with righteousness to your church, you have come with righteousness to your community is enough a problem. That's what we're saying. Look at what John chapter three tells us about this righteousness. The effect of righteousness. The Bible says in verse 16 to verse 19. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have a everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light. Neither come to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth, cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Can you see it now? Jesus has come with the message of salvation. Those who accept this message of salvation are saved. And they become light wherever they are. Who, you who receive the message of holiness, you become light wherever you are. But then, those who don't want salvation, those who, want, who, who, who don't want this message are in darkness. They hate the light. Because by your life, your, their sins shall be exposed. Their evil shall be exposed. So, they will seek naturally to do you evil. A particular accountant in one of these states was sent along with others to a local government to audit the salary accounts of the local government. Now they discovered so many millions that the people raised up fake names and were paying. And when they discovered that, they recovered the money. After they recovered the money, the committee sent to, in, to do the audit work said, now let us share the money. Uh-uh. <laughs> we were sent to go and locate thieves. We went and located thieves. And we said they were thieves. Now to come to the government to give them what we have recovered, you are saying that we should be the higher rate of thieves. Let's sit down and share this money. The brother said, I cannot do that. They shared the money. He said, I cannot take. No, you must take. Uh, you are going to take. If you don't take, we are going to be in trouble. The, the director called him and said, 
you know you have to take this money if you want my good if you want my peace if you want <laughs> you must take this money because if you don't take this money we who are taking the money are, in, are going to be in trouble and we want the money we don't want to give it back to the government please take your share i will not take my share so will they love him no. that is the natural thing has he done evil no. he didn't do evil he was faithful for that righteousness he was hated so god wants you to know this so that when hatred comes your way from the family from the office from the workplace from the neighborhood you should know is coming because of your righteousness your righteousness is light it's disturbing them it's inconveniencing them your friend is hating you why your righteousness your righteousness is disturbing him now he can't converse with you as before he used to bring issues of immorality converse with you and you laugh that gives him pleasure but now you're not doing that again if he ever comes and tells you that yesterday he his girlfriend visited him he's in trouble your girlfriend visited you where were you people what did you do to yourself are you aware of hellfire trouble has come to him will he be coming to your house again it's natural that is the case now you are in christ you are righteous you belong to god light has come into your family here was a member of your family that is a witch or a wizard and because you are in the house the lord said i am with you always even to the ends of the earth is that so and the presence of the lord his answers to your prayers the angelic ministry around you doesn't admit that witchcraft anymore the witch is not finding it easy anymore so how will this witch treat you have you offended him but your righteousness is the cause your righteousness is the problem what if this witch were your wife what if this witch were your husband a wizard was were your husband so how will it be what if it is one of the in-laws how will it be therefore let your understanding open to see why all this hatred is coming to you all these troubles are coming to you so that you will be peaceful i mean you you, you will be uh, um, you, you will be confident in Christ. Now, sources of persecution. Sources of persecution. How does persecution come? In the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says, John 10, 10, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus has come for life. And you have received this life. He has come for abundant life. Holiness and righteousness. No sin. And you have gone forth for the abundant life. He has come to, to give you life in salvation. Give you abundantly in holiness. You have got this. The thief doesn't want it. Who is the thief? Yes. Satan doesn't want that. And that is why he is moving against you. To steal away this thing. To destroy you. To kill your soul. That's Satan in the book of Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 verse 12 to 17. The Bible also tells us here saying. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. The devil is aware of the time we are in now. If it was short at the time, it was, this was written, is shorter now. If the devil was angry then, he is most angry now. Why? The time is short. And when the dragon saw that, 
He was cast into the earth. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. He persecuted the woman who brought forth the man child. This woman was bringing forth the man child. Child of God. Children of God. People according to the will of God. Let's apply it to us now. The woman becomes holiness revival movement worldwide. That the Lord has raised up in this end time to bring forth the man child bring forth salvation bring forth people of righteousness and holiness that shall make it to heaven children of god justified made perfect for the rapture so because of this the dragon is persecuting satan is persecuting listen persecution is still coming are you getting it now whatever we think we have faith is small Whatever you think you have faith is small. Whatever criticism, whatever attacks, whatever blackmails we are receiving is small. Why? Because of what the devil knows us to be. What the devil knows this movement to be. To be. He wants to wipe it out. He wants to attack it. In fact, he wants to do great evil against this movement. Blot it out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He's doing everything to blot out this movement. That he wants to hinder it. That it does not reach the other countries. It does not reach your village. It does not reach the other community. So this is what the devil is doing. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. That she might fly into the wilderness. Into her place. Where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time for the f from the face of the earth. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the egg helped the woman. We are going to be helped by God. Yes, the protection of God will remain upon us. Amen. The eyes of God will remain upon us. Amen. Whatever the devil will want to do, the Lord will protect us. Amen. I am telling you, God is going to preserve you. Amen. Release your zeal for God in this movement. Release your zeal and serve God in holiness and righteousness. Women, don't fear to rise up in holiness. To rise up in perfection. In your marriage, in your family, in your society, whatever any husband will do, the God of heaven will protect your life. Whatever any man will do, the God of heaven will protect your life. Whatever is coming up in this society, it shall not hurt you. I say it shall not hurt you. God is with us. He has said, this is my movement. I have raised it up and it is end time movement. Gathering people for everlasting life. And God will be with us. Amen. All the effort of the dragoon. The flood of waters. Multitudes of people. <laughs> you know, uh, one of the lost chosen person was say, telling me that about how many of them, when the prayer warriors were given three months to pray, that Sister Linda must die. They did all the prayers. And now they went to say that, Instead of Sister Linda married, dying, she, went, she got married and became a Nigerian properly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We shall make big progress. I said we shall make progress. You will make progress in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because God is with us. These things we are doing, they are right. The Lord has told us by the revelation of yesterday that short of one of us who has gone to heaven ahead of us to show that you are on the right way. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's what I'm telling you. And the dragoon uh, and, the, and the dragoon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. They, uh, they keep the commandments of God. Holiness. Righteousness. Holding to truth. 
Yeah, they keep the testimony of Jesus. All this revelation the Lord has given, they are the testimonies of Jesus. He is the one making appearances. He is the one giving the revelation. And these righteous people, they keep the word of God. The testimony of Jesus and the word of God, the commandments of God, they are one. So, the dragon will fight. He will want to come and fight you. Because you are keeping to the commandments of God. Because you are keeping to the testimony of Jesus. But be comforted. Be at peace. The grace of God will keep you. Amen. Therefore, you should expect persecution to follow your new life in Christ. Yes. Your commitment to this message and to the life of righteousness and holiness. Expect persecution. In the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. Chapter 3, verse 12. Yeah, maybe we'll read it together. Are you there? So that you can be prepared. One, two, go. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. These persecutions are coming from who? Coming from your relations. Beloved relations. You were living in peace with them. You were helpful to them. You were sincere to them. But what happened now? They are hating you. They are having family meeting without inviting you. They are neglecting you now. In fact, even to come to your house has become a problem. To come to your house, because how will they come to your house with earrings and go free? How will those ladies wear trousers to your house and go free? The other time she came, she removed trousers on the way and put it in her bag. How long will she be removing this type of trousers like that? She doesn't want to, to, to avoid the trouser. Let me not come again. So, they are, you find yourself from your father. Your father is angry with you. Without a cause. Your mother is cursing you. Cursing me? Mother? With all the care? With all the concern? You are cursing me? This thing is, I can't understand. You can't understand? Understand it today. Yes. It could be even your children are not bothering about you anymore. Your children are not bothering. Are not respecting you. Giving you your honor. Your husband. Oh, wonderful. You, your wives need special prayers. Because of their husbands. Yes. Except wives are strong. This new thing is a problem to them. What about husbands? Also suffering in the hands of the wives. Husbands. Because you have changed church. You have left this other church. And moved to this church. Because you want to live. You want eternal life. Your wife said it can never be. If you will not come back to this church, I will not cook food for you again. Ah, but woman, who buys the food to the house? Am I not the one that buys the food to the house? Uh, if, well, you buy the food for us. If you want to be one of us eating this food, come back to the church. You begin to wonder. My wife doing this to me, you won't slap her now. She knows you can't slap her again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, you begin to wonder. Brothers, your sisters, and so on. They are now the ones persecuting your life. For what reason? He that is in the darkness hates the light. That's the world. Again, your neighbors, the ones you are with now, you are having problem with them. Why are you having problem with them? You are having problem with them because your prayer life is disturbing them. But is it because you shout the prayer? No, not really because you shout the prayer. But the spirit of the prayer the power that accompanies the prayer is now a trouble to them. So, as a result, they are, they are angry. They must pack out of that place because of you. And the packing out, they are angry at you. They will want to do many things to cause you to stop. Now, let me tell you this story. Some boys and children that were in a secret society said to their mother, because of your Christian faith and prayer, we saw that we could not operate. We could not go out freely now. 
So what we needed to do to have time to go out was to do things that will make you angry. So that when you are angry, you are mad at us and say, I will deal with you and you are beating us with anger everywhere, the presence of God in you come down. It's then we can now take over. Is, is that persecution of children? So you will not be aware. You say, where is this child naturally stubborn? Where are you doing like that with me? Control yourself, woman. Control yourself, man. Because there's something they want to remove from you. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So, beware. Persecutions coming from friends. Coming from friends. I've told you already. Because things are not compatible again. You can't, you can't, speak, the, you can't speak one language again. You can't take one decision again. So, the friend doesn't want it. He doesn't, in fact, he doesn't want it again. If you visit him, he's not interested. Of course, you yourself should know. Be not equal, unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And persecution from the workplace. Persecution coming to you from your workplace. Because the world is evil. The world is wicked. They are eating the money of the government. And you are, a, you are the root by which they have been eating this money. Your signature is required. Uh, you are the director. You are the one to be sharing the money to these other ones under you. With your new faith, you can't do so again. The people are not benefiting from you anymore. Would they love you? They will want to do everything to tarnish your image. They want to tell every lie against your life. Persecution from your boss. Persecution from your fellow workers. Persecution from the backsliding church. That's what a lot of you are suffering from now. Persecution from your churches. They don't want this. We have been accustomed to these ways. We are used to these ways. Please leave us in it. Don't bring those things. If you bring those things into this church, we will become barbarians. We will become fools. Even we will leave the pulpit and sit down so that we can be taught. And what a shame. Having pastored for 30 years, I become a member of the church. Somebody is teaching me. A small boy like you. When did you go to your Bible school? So, they will want to do everything to get you frustrated. In fact, they will prefer that you leave the church. Leave the church. So, persecution from the church will be coming against you. Persecution from the pastor. Persecution from the pastor. Persecution from fellow members of the church. Persecution from authorities. Maybe the union. Your businessmen. Persecution from the union. Let's contribute money so that we can go and bribe uh, these other people so they can do this for us. He said, no. I can't contribute that money. Eh? You can't contribute this money. You are going to be in trouble. We will contribute the money and bribe the person. And then you'll be eating. You'll be selling. You'll be doing business. It can never work here. Persecution from unions. Persecution from the government. So, all these ones are agents of the devil. The principal persecutor. But, we are saying that you should handle persecution in your newfound faith. Let's go to scriptures. Tell us how to handle persecutions. Is that okay? Let's enter scriptures to tell us in the book of Matthew chapter 10. Let's read from verse 16 to 39. You will be seeing Jesus talking to you about these things that you should have understanding about them. Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Take these two qualities. Wisdom and harmlessness. Wisdom and humility. 
wisdom and gentleness wisdom and righteousness wisdom and holiness remember these two legs always stand on these two legs wisdom be wise as you're dealing in the society be wise if any man lacketh wisdom let him ask of god that give it to all men liberally and abrade it not and it shall be given him always ask god how to deal in circumstances always ask god how to live with your parents with your relations always inquire from god how to answer back to your husband always inquire from god how you can treat in business in this crooked and perverse generation always ask god for wisdom he will give you pure wisdom otherwise you will find yourself using methods that are sinful you will find yourself challenging persecution in ways that are sinful and then there will be no reward right now the thief has stolen from you so wisdom harmlessness maintain righteousness at every point whichever way that you think is wisdom you have got to solve this matter that will make you commit a single sin know that it is not from you know, know that it's not from god to your life so remember this now he continues to say in verse 17 but beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils they will scorch you in their synagogues do you remember that the disciples were scorched they were scorched older people than you let's say or people of your age or whatever they were scorched people younger than you they have power to have faced the situation but they yielded themselves to be scorched and when they were scorched they went rejoicing counting themselves worthy to be beaten to be put to shame in the name of the Lord Jesus. If therefore they were scourged, what happened? Are you not going to be scourged? Is a servant higher than his master? No. So that's what the Bible wants you to know. Don't, don't fight against people. If they're trying to despise you, don't refuse it. Don't contend. You want to despise me? I will not. I will, uh -uh. Then you're not a Christian. Because that is for Christians. God wants you to be in that position. Be harmless. Again it says in verse 18, And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour. What ye shall speak, for it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father who speaketh in you. Can you see what the Lord is saying? He's saying some of these governors have no time to hear the gospel. I, I, persecution will be the way in which they too can hear their gospel. So persecution brings you before a man of authority. Persecution brings you before policemen. Persecution brings you before soldiers. Persecution takes you to the court. Make sure, know it, that God made a way for you to be there. So those people too who have no chance to be in church can hear the gospel be bold. Whatever the Lord tells you, speak it there. Respecting no person. Is that what you're, you're hearing? What the Holy Ghost gives you to say before your husband. What the Holy Ghost gives you to say before your wife. What the Holy Ghost gives you to say before the boss in the office. What the Holy Ghost gives you to say before your overseer that has had been up by the devil. Please say it. It's God's design to have mercy upon them. Mercy upon those that will believe. Paul spoke until Agrippa said, Thou almost make me to become a Christian. He said, not almost, but altogether. I wish you were like me. Except that you should not be chained like I am chained now. So, it's opportunity for them. Be bold to speak. Don't be a coward. Don't allow your body to be shivering. Why are you shivering? God is with you and you are shivering. God is with you and you are afraid. 
God is with you and you're hiding your face. Don't hide your face. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Greater is he that is in you than your persecutors. They can never lift up a hand against you except the Lord gives them chance. They can never kill you except the Lord gives them chance. They can never drive you away except the Lord gives them chance. Je Pilate asked Jesus, can you, not, can you not answer me? No, it's down know that I have the power to set you free. I have the power to condemn you. Jesus said, thou canst have no power over me except it is given to you from above. They would have been fearing and fearing before Pilate. Pilate cannot set me free. He has no power to set me free. Because the things written me must be written about me must be fulfilled. So don't fear your persecutors. Don't fear what your husband is saying. Don't fear the threatening of the marriage. That is saying you will pack out of this place. Don't bother yourself. If the Lord has never planned that you should pack out of that place, you will never pack out in Jesus' name. Amen. And if the Lord has planned that, please, my daughter, rapture is about taking place. This man has hardened himself. Please, can you pack and stay at the other side so that I just perfect everything that concerns you so that when the trumpet sounds, boom, you will jump up and go to heaven? That, that's the wisdom of God. For all things work together for good. To them that love God. Who are they called according to his purpose? Whether up or down is for your good. Whether left or right, it is for your good. Therefore, fear not. That's the word. Now let's go forward. Again, it says in verse 21, And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death. And the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Everybody say, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Say it. Say it again. The seed that fell on rocky ground don't endure to the end. Why? They have not allowed the word to sing root in their hearts. You are receiving this word with doubt. You will not endure in persecution. You, have doubt, you are doubting. He, the Bible says, um, he that doubted is a double, a, a double minded man. Let him not think that he shall receive anything from God. You are doubting. Why are you doubting? With all these evidences you are doubting? With all these testimonies you are doubting? Testimonies coming from a crowd of many witnesses you are doubting? That shows you won't continue this race. You will not continue. If thou faint in the day of adversity, it is because your strength was small. Gear up strength and get this conviction so that you can endure. For who is it that is not tested? You are not tested that they gave you a certificate? That certificate is not useful. You are not tested. How do you qualify? So, endure. Whatever it is in the family, endure. In the office, endure. In the church, endure. In your neighborhood, endure. That's the word telling us. Again, it says in verse 23, But when they persecute you in this city, flee into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub. How much more shall they call them of his household? Your problem is name. How they are calling you. Your problem is name. A particular brother said, a relation of his called him and said, come. I say you should stop this thing. You should stop this thing that you are doing. See you now. Your head is bigger than your body. So, 
He now said, uh, Auntie, my aunt, you say, my head is bigger than my body. Nobody has seen me so except you. There's a problem with your eyes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said it was raining outside heavily. The auntie pushed him into the rain. Move away from my house. Move away from my house. Your problem is people's language. Let it not bother you. The names they call you. You sit down and be crying. They have said I am witchy. I am a witch. That I am the one who killed my child. Are you bothering about that? Are you really a witch? No. Then what's your problem? If they have called the master Belzebub, what name would they not call you? Don't bother about the names they call you. Don't bother about the remarks they are making over your life. And he continues to say, and he, he tells in verse 26, Fear them not therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in, the light, in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell and not two sparrows sold for a farthing and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father but the very hairs of your head are all numbered fear ye not therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows here God is talking about the care over your life being righteous the word of your life there is a great mind that is observing you that is thinking about you a great watch over your life in all your activities in all your movement because what you are doing pleases god what you are doing interests god don't think poison will kill you there is a god of heaven a god in heaven don't think it. Don't think uh, some robbers maybe will attack you and destroy you. There's a God that is watching over you. Don't think of assassins. Don't think about that. In fact, the many things that we have done, if we didn't have courage, <laughs> we would not have done them. Uh, when our beloved sister was giving her Linda to and revealing some of these fake uh, ministers, now, we were sitting behind her. Is that clear? I remember uh, this thing was a crusade that we organized and I was in control. So, we were sitting behind with other uh, coordinators and other ministers. When she began to echo out those names, I told myself, I said, eh? <laughs> Come, why didn't I prepare? What if the congregation breaks forth and are coming to us now? Trouble has come. I wanted to tell those people sitting with me, move quickly and go and take your position in the, in the crowd. I was thinking what to do. What's the next thing to do here now? Uh, what type of, we didn't go to police to see, to see police uh, coverage in this place. Which type of thing is this? Uh, what do we do? Please. Uh, a thought came and said, even if you ask these people to go to, to take their position in the crowd, and the crowd decides to break forth and be coming for attack. Can they do anything? Trust in God that has told you that he is with you. That it is well. They, I grab myself like this. Praise the Lord. It's not easy, my brethren. If you don't have courage, you can't do these things. One of the coordinators told me that, thank God you didn't move and say you are going to urinate. <laughs> he said if you had moved from so you were going back like that everybody would have started running and <laughs> praise the Lord we would have embarrassed God if we did that we would have shown God that nobody could stand for him 
We would have shown God that these people are more powerful than him. God is powerful. Stand and believe him. That's why he said, what I told you in the secret, go and announce it. Don't fear. Don't fear anything. What I told you privately, privately, go and declare it. Don't think that anybody can attack you, can come at you, can take any action, for God is with you. The very hair of your head are all numbered. And none shall fall to the ground. I'm telling you so you should be bold where you are. Bold in whichever church you are in. Bold in whichever nation. Bold in any place where you are in righteousness and holiness. Our God is with you. He will defend you. Fear not them who kill the body. Don't fear them. When I was writing one of these books, that uh, uh, the names of persons were involved, the devil came and said, trouble has come. Now it's time for assassin to come to your house. You are writing this thing? You are going to be in trouble. I said, maybe I was created to write this book and die. If that is the reason why I was created, then I am doing my duty. After I have finished writing this book, let me die. Have I died? No. I shall not die. But live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. To show forth the greatness of the Lord. I shall live to fight the devil. Are you hearing me? And to snatch the church from the hand of Satan. To snatch souls from the hand of Satan. And the Lord is with me. The Lord is with you. We are fighting these battles together. We are standing together. And God, Jesus himself is our captain. Nothing shall by any means hurt us. That's what the Lord is telling you now. Yes, fear them not. Even if they succeed to kill your body, your soul is intact. They killed your body because it was time. John the Baptist was taken because it was time. He was beheaded because it was his time. If it is not your time, in your righteousness and holiness, submitting to God, nothing will happen to you. So, that's what God wants you to know. So you can stand your ground and never worry. And he said in verse 30, in verse, verse 31, Fear ye not therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Make sure you don't deny Jesus. Another story came that the Boko Haram got some people, some Christians, and they took them to their camp. And now said, okay, the only way we can free you if you can deny Jesus. If you can deny Jesus, we free you. Then they began to deny Jesus, remaining two people. They said, we will not deny Jesus. You can kill us. Then the leader of the haram said, these people that have denied Jesus, even if we bring them to Islam, they will not stand. <laughs> Clear them off. And these people that stood for their God, even to death, their God will zealously fight for their sake. If we try them, we'll be in trouble. we we'll release them. If you deny me before me, I will deny you before my Father which is in heaven. The worst will happen to you in this life. If you confess me in the presence of danger before me, I will confess you before my Father which is in heaven. And the power of my Father shall go for your sake. That's the word of God. That's what the Lord is saying. So be very careful not to say you want to save your life. No. And he said something. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am not I, am, I came not to send peace, but a sword. Let not Satan deceive you. He said, for 
He said in verse 36, And a man's thoughts shall be day of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Think not that I have come to make peace on the earth. Let not Satan send counselors to you. To say, no, you know, you have to live it peacefully in the house. The, what your husband said he doesn't want. Your husband is a good man. He said he doesn't want this. And you know your husband has been living in peace with you all this while. That's not the peace Jesus came with. The peace Jesus came with is peace that accompanies holiness. That's the peace he came. In case they're deceiving you. It's okay. You know, these people say they don't want prayers. Why not live with them? If you bear with them now, live peacefully with them. That's not the peace the Lord has come with. When they told Daniel, announced in, in Pesha and Mace that anybody who made prayer to any God for how many days? For 30 days. Only 30 days. All prayers should be made to the king. All prayers should be made to the king. Just for 30 days. But if anybody made prayer to any other God, he shall be killed. She shall be thrown into the den of the lions. No, people would have come to, lovers would have come to Daniel. Fake lovers. Wicked lovers. Messengers of Satan. Would have come to Daniel. I say, you know, this thing, they're doing it because of you. All is because your prayer, you are praying too much. So, and you, truly the king loves you. You should know it yourself. In fact, the king is planning to make you the head of these people. So, our counsel is for this space of 30 days only, remove yourself from prayers. We will frustrate those people. After 30 days, if you want to increase prayers to 5 times, you can do. If you want to increase it to 40 times, you can do. You will think it's the voice of lovers. You should design the voice of the enemy. Think not that I've come to bring peace upon the earth. I've come to bring his sword. If it will mean your friendship with that man will cut off forever, let it cut off. It, if it will mean your marriage with that man will cut off forever, let it cut off. If it will mean your marriage with that woman will cut off forever, let it cut off. Jesus is on your side. Because any peace that lacks righteousness is the peace of Satan. Two people lying down that are lying down. Two enemies who, who fought and killed themselves and they are lying down. They are lying in peace. But is that a peace of... Uh, is that peace having any value? They are not making noise. They are not making noise because there is no life in them. That peace you are, you are making, that compromise of peace, peace of compromise is because you are no more alive in Christ. Otherwise, you will burn to the end until the will of God will be done in your life. So, that's the word. In the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse, Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 48. Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 48. The Bible says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. Did not, did not say, no, you can't do me evil. No, don't do that. When these people want to persecute you, to do like that to you, to, don't say, eh, no, eh, I will fight my way. And the, day, the Lord will be saying, uh, 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 don't do that, don't do that. Children of God, don't go that way. Allow your cause before God. God will take care. That's what he's saying. Resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Calm and quiet, for your master did the same. And if any man will sue, you, sue thee at the law and take away thy cord, let him have thy cloak 
also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twine. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despisely use you and persecute you. What is the Lord saying? Always stand on the side of righteousness. In the family, don't speak evil. Don't retaliate. Always stand in your office, in the society, in the church. Even when these false elders or rather backsliding elders are challenging you, only speak the way God gives you to speak. Don't use your carnal wisdom. Stand always on the way of righteousness. Make sure you don't abuse them. That's what the word says. Pray for them. Do good for them. For Jesus said, Lord, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. Go the way of Jesus. Stephen said, Lord, lay not this thing, this thing to their charge. Always think that these people will be born again tomorrow. The grace of God can visit them. For Saul the persecutor became Paul the apostle. Therefore be gentle. Don't be cursing them. Don't pray. I pray the Lord will destroy you. Don't pray that type of prayers. Over these people. That's what God wants you to do. Verse 45. That ye may be the children of your father. Which is in heaven. That ye may be the children of your father. Which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you. What reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only. What do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Ah. God with all human beings are doing. They are casting stones upon you. God is not bothering the stones they are casting upon you. He said angel go close to him. And see whether any bad words are coming out of his mouth. Take record. Check his thoughts. See, is there any wicked thought on him? Because I have taken him to this higher life of, of test and examination. Because I want him, I want to fix him in an office. And this office will need, this, will need people tested with this examination. So go back, go to him. Whatever they're saying to you, whatever they're doing to you, is it more than what they did to Jesus? And with all his persecution, like a sheep before her shearer is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Being reviled, he reviled not again. That's what God expects of you. Whatever they're doing, whatever challenge, whatever criticism, whatever bad report, what if, whichever, they announced it in the radio, they wrote it in newspaper, they did it whatever, spoke it in television, do it what? God is interested in you, not those people. As for those people, they are condemned. He's not thinking about them for eternal life. It's you. He's not thinking about them for promotion, but it's you. Who already have come. That he wants to know whether you are going to take it. How you will treat it. Because going to heaven is not an easy thing. We must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom. Therefore, be very careful. In the challenges of life. Take care of your mouth. Very careful. In your attitude. Don't bring hatred into it. Very careful. Otherwise the two of you are the same. If you will have the righteous God on your side. The righteous God loveth righteousness. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. People have been doing evil against him. But he has not replied to, he has not replied to them. That's what you should understand. And again in verse 11, uh, in verse 10 and 11 of chapter 5 of Matthew, 
The Bible says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Why are you troubled with human beings? God knows the truth of the matter. It shall be revealed. Why are you troubled about Hey, I don't want these people to know that. I'm, leave them. <laughs> it's just like our sister. That the revelation showed. Oh, how? I want my family to know. They have done today. I, I, how do I tell the church that I met heaven? They have had today. Leave that matter to God. He is the one that can bring private things to the open. So don't worry. So he knows that those things they are saying about you are lies. God knows. And it is God that justifies. So don't bother about your justification before me. Now, the Bible says, there is a saying that, don't struggle to defend yourself before your friends. They already know that you are just and that you are true. Don't struggle to defend yourself before your enemies. There is no amount of defense that will make them accept you. So, be peaceful and be calm. It's except the Holy Spirit puts weight in you. The Holy Spirit gives instruction to you that you are carrying out that instruction. If he says, do this, say this, make sure you speak the weights that the Spirit of your Father gives you. That's what you should understand. There's so much we have to say and time has gone. And let's quickly take this. In First Peter chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, verse 12 to 19. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, verse 12 to 19. The Bible tells us here, saying, For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that had suffered in the flesh had ceased from sin. As much as Christ suffered in the flesh, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. That's what the Bible says. Sit down and count the costs. You want to accept this message? There is implication for it. Sit down. Count the cost. Then move forward with determination. Because as you are determined, that is the secret of your strength. You have made up your mind. The Lord will back you up. So, that's what it, the scripture is telling us here. Arm yourself. And then in verse 12, the Bible tells, uh, verse 12 to 19, it says, Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad, with, glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory, and of God rested upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is justified. He is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other means matters. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him Glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God. Commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. Let him that suffer according to the will of God 
The will of God is that you should partake of Christ's suffering. That's why the persecutions come. That's why he allows it for a while. Before he settles you. His, it is his will that you should partake of persecution, of suffering. But there is a suffering. There is a persecution that is not the will of God. It is the persecution you suffer when you carry yourself into a matter that does not belong to you. It is a persecution you suffer when you tell lies. You say you are a Christian but you are telling lies. That's why the Lord allows them to judge you so you can repent of that lies. So that judgment, that persecution is to cleanse you. Is to chastise you. Is to discipline you. Because the course you have taken is wrong. There's the persecution you, you go into when you commit immorality. Child of God, why meant you to go and commit immorality? Ah, trouble has come on your way. Trouble has come on your way. So, it must not go like that. You must be persecuted. You must be chastised. You must be dealt with. So that those things should not continue in your life. Where are you, where are you criticizing people? Why are you telling lies? Why are you gossiping? If you go into these things, into this evil, whatever you suffer there, actually, you are suffering not because of righteousness. It's actually not the mind of God for you to suffer it. It's your sin that is causing you to suffer. Yet he allowed so because maybe that suffering can bring you to your senses and you may repent and turn to God. But for you who are in the will of God and you are suffering, Commit the keeping of your soul to your creator. He is faithful. He will keep you. He will preserve you. And life will be well with you. Amen. 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 Briefly now, let me round up. Now, there, 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 there is reward of enduring persecution. If you endure persecution, wonderful. God deals with you as a child, happily, joyfully, he's dealing with you with honor. You are partaking of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three to verse five. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three to verse five. The Bible tells us here, saying, "Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." The Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. Does the Lord leave you alone? When you are in persecution? No. The Lord was with the three Hebrews children. He was seen. With the, form, the form of the fourth was the, like the son of God. So God will be with you. In your persecution, he will comfort you. In your persecution, he will advise you. In your persecution, he will assure you. He will make promises for you. In your persecution, he will be telling you about heaven. He will be telling you, yes, I know it. But hold firm. Yes, I know it. Don't worry. So, the comfort of God. Persecution makes God nearer to you. It's darkness in your life. Light shines brighter in darkness. The more darkness, the brighter the light. So, the God of heaven is with you. Be assured of this. If you see persecution... If you see armed robbers coming against you, you see mob, you see the society, you see elders of the church, you see your husband tormenting, your wife tormenting, you see anything, persecution, your God is with you. Your God is with you. Be assured. You may not see anybody around. Paul said, at my last answer, no man stood with me, but God was with me and strengthened me. So no E, you're not alone. Be confident. Be bold. Be peaceful. God is with you and will take care of your life. As more and more persecutions are coming on your way, more and more presence of God you will have. Is that clear? Yes. Honey is manufactured during heat period. 
the hotter the things are to you, the greater grace you will have to produce sweet things about God. The book of Revelation was written when John was in the island of Patmos. Paul wrote a lot of his letters under persecution in prison. God has something to bring out. God has some quality of your life to bring out when you are being challenged, when you are being, uh, are being criticized, when your name is being spoiled. It is as your name is spoiled that it, God makes it better. Is that clear? It's as the situation gets worse. Call me no more now, my. Call me Mara, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. Ah, let now my rejoice because a child has been born to her. Can you hear me? So, her story has entered into the book of life. That's what you should know. Persecution, God is with you, His comfort is with you. Receive the comfort. Amen. In the book of Revelation chapter, chapter, chapter 2 rather, verse 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. The Bible tells us here, say, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogues of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation. How many days? Ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. This is the promise of God. Stay to the end. If it involves that you will die for your information God has marked you among those that shall die by martyrdom yes. is that clear? Yes. for nothing is without the plan of God God marked you as those that will die because there is a crown in heaven called the crown of martyrdom when, how many of you have read this uh, delightful revelation delightful revelation Oh, the number is few. I don't know whether the book is here. They have carried them off. They are still there. Okay, please get that book. It's great. You will be too happy. If they are persecuting you, you will be rejoicing. <laughs> so, when Seneca Sodi in that book was in heaven, Paul the apostle was passing him and was going somewhere in haste. He asked Paul, ah, where are you going? Yes, to this, this, this is our day. It's our moment now. The king is going to appear to honor us as many as died because of him in the world. So, he asked him, did you die because of Jesus? Were you beheaded? Because Paul was beheaded. And as many people like that, they were going for, to the, is it, they are going to, the, is it the throne side? They were, eh? They were going now, it was going to be, the Lord was going to organize parade for them. And this will be going on eternally. So, the Paul said, did you die for Jesus? Did they kill you for Jesus? The man was disappointed that they didn't kill him for Jesus. <laughs> the man was disappointed. You mean there's glory like that in heaven? People are running away from death for Jesus. No, it's okay, don't worry, don't worry. Now, if they didn't kill you for Jesus, you can come along and be a spectator and watch how the king shall parade us. The thing, how the glory shall be moving upon us. It is our time. It is our time. That's it. Be thou faithful unto day if the Lord has marked you as part of the mighty Adam. Those that shall die for Jesus, your numbers are few. It means the Lord favored you. He favored James the Apostle. And he was beheaded. He was, dead. he was killed for the gospel of Christ. Antipas. He favored him. Maybe you will be favored. I say maybe you will be favored. Today you will be wearing this special crown. Among other crowns. Crowns on crowns. And when we see you in heaven... We shall give you respect. 
you loved Jesus unto dying for him. What a great respect. What a great respect. You know, when Jesus rose up from the dead, what did he show his disciples? The, side, the wounded side. The wounded hands. That identified him. That showed him the Lord. That showed him the great Messiah. It is by that the Lamb slain. That is how we recognize him. That is how we, we, we bless him. Because he suffered for us. And he shot it joyfully. See me. I who suffered for you. I am alive. When we go to heaven. Everybody will be testifying what he suffered for Jesus. You are going to tell the story. You are going to tell the story. Are you going to say your wife denied you because of Jesus? Are you going to say you even lost your marriage? Don't go and lose it by force. Don't go and lose your marriage by force. Are you going to say you even lose your marriage for Jesus? Are you going to say you went for evangelism somewhere they cast stones upon you for Jesus? Are you going to say they call you, they gave you various names and say you were devils, you were demons? Are you going to say you followed, you suffered all that by G because of Jesus? What are you going to tell them? What will you say to suffered that lead to criticism? You're already defeated. You're already going away, ignorant woman, ignorant man that never knew that's the way of glory. That's the way of greatness. That's the way of future joy. That's why the Bible says, when they persecute you, rejoice and be exceeding glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. Fear no man. Let them kill your body. Your soul shall live forever. Your soul shall live forever. Love Jesus to death. Love him unto death. Love him forever. Never fear any man. Never fear any authority. Let Jesus be Lord over your life forever. What your master tells you, you will do. The commandments of your master, you will do. The testimonies of your master, you will keep. Now and forevermore. Oh Lord, have mercy. Rise up upon your feet. Pray to God that you, you have mercy upon your life. You have made up your mind. You will never go away. You will never run away from persecution. Never. Never. You will rule with Jesus. You will rule with him. You will be rewarded. You will be blessed. Because you kept the commandments of Jesus. You are suffering persecution. The Lord will honor you. The Lord will honor you. He will give you public honor. Eternal one in fact. Eternal. You will rule with Jesus. You will rule with Jesus. Fear not. Of those things which you are suffering. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. The Lord is with you. He will take care of you. He will guide your life. He will preserve your life. Go and do righteousness my sister. Go and do righteousness my brother. Preach the gospel. Fearing nobody. Preach it in the night. Preach it in the day. Preach it before authority. Preach it before any religious man. People of any other religion. Preach this word. Thank you. For nothing shall happen to you without God allowing it. Be ready to suffer. Be ready to suffer persecution. From family members. From your wife. From your husband. From children. From neighbor. From friends. From the churches. From the pastors. Jesus name we pray by and by when the morning comes morning comes 
All the saints shall gather up above. We shall tell the story how we overcame. We shall understand it better by and by, by and by, my brother. Oh yes. When the money comes, by and by, my sister. Oh, yes. When the money comes, March on, march on, don't be tired. Your Savior understands. It shall be well. It shall be well. March on, march on. Don't be tired. Thy Savior understands. It shall be well. It shall be well. Amen. Lift up your hand now and make your commitment this moment and say, Lord, I will serve you to the end. I will hold to the faith. No matter the persecution that comes my way, I will not deny you. I will not deny you. I will stand for you. I will stand for righteousness. I will stand for holiness. Help me, Lord, so that I will not be weak, that I will not misuse my tongue. Give me grace to pray for my enemies, to do good for my persecutors. That should be your prayer this hour. And say, Lord, help me to stand. Hold my hand. I will make it to the end. They will want to take me out of the narrow way. I will stand on the narrow way. In Jesus' name we pray. It is well with you in Jesus' name. And God of heaven will keep you, will hold you, will walk along with you in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for tonight. You have revealed your mind to us. You have passed through this narrow way. He that is the Son of God, having power, having authority, you know what to do against your enemy, but you keep quiet. You are like a sheep carried for slaughter. You open it, not your mouth. Our problem, Lord, is some of us, we are behaving like stubborn goats that is struggling, draggy, not to go for slaughter. Lord, help us tonight that each and every one of us will be real sheep of the Master in Jesus' name. Amen. All the fire of persecution, they will may stir up like Nebuchadnezzar that kindled the furnace seven times hotter. Lord Jesus, you will appear to defend your people. You will appear to shield your children. You will appear to have fellowship with your people. As many that are passing through such persecution right away, 
from parents, from neighbors, from relations, from church, from backsliding pastors and believers. Oh Lord, help them, stand for them, and defend them now in Jesus' name. None of the people here, oh Lord, none of us shall backslide. None of us shall regret for knowing this truth. They will hold on to serve you, Lord, to the end in Jesus' name. We have a lot of cloud of witnesses. People that have gone ahead of us. They have passed through this line. Their persecution was much more severe. Our own was just mild persecution. Little criticism. Little accusation. False comments. And wrong names. And bad names they are calling us with. Help us Lord to stand to the end in Jesus name. Thank you Lord for hearing our prayers. Amen. Before we round up, our pastor said, I should pray for you. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiry, contact us on 0813 635 and 0805-683-4323 You can also reach us through our email address holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com God bless you. Oh.